I really start to see the value of pressure testing. Because if I even look back at my previous martial arts training where I had non-resisting opponents, never were these nine strike techniques done under pressure when someone's actually trying to hit you, yeah. when someone's trying to get a double underhook and toss you to the ground, right. you know? And all of it, and, and this is where I, I went from being very confident in my martial arts ability to losing a lot of confidence when these things started getting pressure tested and I all of a sudden feel ineffective. There is huge, huge, huge value in understanding what works and what doesn't and getting thrown in the fire, getting used to chaos. Can you execute one, two, three, four, all these sequential movements to, to actually be proficient at a technique under the heat of battle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is another week and another episode of the Budo Brothers podcast. And recently we were doing some training with Sifu Kevin Goat and we were pressure testing some mount escapes. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, what we were drilling and practicing in the lesson did not show up for me when we were pressure testing it. It is so crazy that you could go through these drills for an hour mm -hmm. or just under mm -hmm. and then go into like a a controlled sparring type situation. Chaos. Cha chaotic situation. And you can't even, you don't even think to do the skill because you're just so in it and you're trying to do it. And you mm -hmm. sometimes revert back to old habits that you don't perform what it is you set out to do. And I think the magic, where we get to a point of proficiency where we don't have to think of step one, step two. And Sifu Kevin Goat is an incredible instructor of breaking it down step by step. All right, you're gonna put your, your knee there, you're gonna bridge, you're gonna put your arm there, you're gonna step one, two, three, four. And that's amazing to build the sequential movements that are required in order to execute the technique. Where my shit falls apart, where I, I really need to, I need repetitions. I'm my, I, I don't know if it's just my learning style, but I have to rep things out. I don't, I'm not quick. I, I don't pick it up like that. I'm athletic. I can, I can fumble my way through, but in order for it to be correct and true to the technique, I have to drill it. I have to drill it, drill it, drill it. And I found in our, in our private sessions where we are being thrown something brand new and we get to learn on the fly. Like you and I had never seen this stuff before right. and we're learning it as he's instructing it on camera and then drilling it to the point where you and I get, all right, we're going to spend five minutes practicing one, two, three, four, five. That alone is not enough. Right. That, is, that alone is not enough to be able to proficiently execute a technique under pressure. And that's where I really start to see the value of pressure testing. Because if I even look back at my previous martial arts training where I had non-resisting opponents, never were these nine strike techniques done under pressure when someone's actually trying to hit you, yeah. when someone's trying to get a double underhook and toss you to the ground, right. you know, and all of it. And, and this is where I, I went from being very confident in my martial arts ability to losing a lot of confidence when these things started getting pressure tested. And I all of a sudden feel ineffective it's eye opening, and that's a, but I love that experience too because it's like, holy shit, I don't even know what I don't know, right. and I thought I knew it. And if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, make sure you do. We're posting a ton of new content, uh, we're trying to, to film our sessions with uh, Kevin Goat and, and share them, yeah, um, with everybody. Uh, it's a bit of new content for yeah. us because we're not used to filming ourselves training and putting it out there, you know, mm -hmm. we are white belts and we just like learning and it's mm -hmm. it's really nice to be able to to share our private sessions with people and and to grow with people mm -hmm. but you do see across the board pressure testing never work uh pressure testing can show you that things don't work mm -hmm. especially with knife fighting you know that that thing where you give a kid a marker and say okay go after them and, and try to mark up this person and you could try to disarm the pen 
and the kid ends up marking you all up yeah. because they they're tagging you with the marker and like mm-hmm. imagine if that was a knife yeah. right so yes sometimes you can go through these beautiful flows and these beautiful disarms and beautiful techniques but you have to know what happens and what your response will be when the intensity increases Mm -hmm. close to a realistic a realistic Mm -hmm. clip Mm -hmm. right and when i look back at my previous training i don't want to write off because i got so much out of it yes but but it's interesting because now you're taking something out of the cocoon of the style and the system where yeah the ukes aren't resisting Mm -hmm. and damn it does it it works amazing (laughs) it works really good and it looks great and now you're trying to do it in all right try that try your omote gyaku (laughs) wrist lock takedown yeah try try and snag a punch out of the air yeah it's not happening especially if you're against a boxer right and I think people forget that within the complexity of that thing, you'll find maybe one thing that works. And generally, it's your footwork, your head movement, your that's timing, the, your angle, the value. your distance, right? That's the value. And that's the best thing you could take out of mm-hmm. it. And you practice that in repetition, and it does help. Because yeah. I do find after doing those types of arts, I was better in other arts. 100%. Yes. It unlocks flow. It creates footwork. All these attributes that are great. But I think my big realization over the last little while when we've been beating the shit out of each other in these pressure testing scenarios is there is huge, huge, huge value in understanding what works and what doesn't and getting thrown in the fire, right. getting used to chaos can you execute one, two, three, four, all these sequential movements to, to actually be proficient at a technique under the heat of battle with a resisting opponent? The most important thing when pressure is being put on you too is your framework and your structure, right? Especially in ground. Actually, standing too. If you have the basic frames and structures and positioning and body mechanic you're already starting off in a much better place Mm -hmm. right um like it with the jujitsu component having the appropriate frame so the person can't squish you as you're starting right standing having the appropriate distance so you're not in a -hmm. a striking zone Mm -hmm. there's there's these little things that if you start off correctly it makes everything a lot easier but if you don't have that the fight instantly becomes more difficult yeah yeah and that's why if you jump ahead too quickly in your training it falls apart yeah you miss all the important pieces Mm -hmm. at the beginning you miss step one two and three yes and that's where i feel like just my style of learning is i need the repetition i need to rep it out i need to just drill it i need to i need to make it so that i'm not thinking about muscle memory okay foot here hand here boom bridge you know i just need to it has to step one two three four five need to become one yeah just it it needs to execute f- seamlessly the thread needs to go through every movement at the right time with the right angle and the right time like this it all has to come together then how do you adapt that to changing like variables right because with martial arts you're going to get different partners different strengths yes. different things yeah different looks mm-hmm. so you rep it out but how do you now adapt it like is it now you have to rep out the pressure testing because you can't do that by yourself mm-hmm. you can't solo practice and learn that no no yeah but I think different bodies and, and, and therein lies a new variable to, mm-hmm. to learn. I think the, the bottom line of pressure testing to, to become proficient and figure out what works and what doesn't, I do think it really, at least I've noticed as we've been going down this path, is I'm, I might still be screwing it up and I might still not be executing the technique, but I am slowly building confidence in being comfortable in the, the melee, in the shit storm. When you're smothering me, mm-hmm. when, you know, when I can't get you off me and I'm having a hard time breathing and I'm starting to freak out. 
right. starting to get more comfortable with that. Yes. That's starting to happen, which I'm okay. This is really valuable mm -hmm. to be, to get used to that chaotic scenario in a fight yeah. <laughs> where it is a shit mess and what you're trying to do isn't working. You know, how, how, far down do you dig mm -hmm. until you, ha you got to switch it up. And that's yeah. what I love about when we're doing this and, and, and Kevin's, Oh no, yo, get your oompa, do it. Like he's yeah. talking me through it. It's like, he sees shit. I don't see. Yes. Yeah. No, it's really good. And martial arts always applies itself to life. And you can have all the amazing ideas and prepare yourself for a situation or a public speaking event or like a social situation. But unless you go out and pressure test it, it's you can fall apart. Yeah, you'll choke on stage. Totally. How many how many people have you seen l l fall apart on stage? Because oh. the fear of public speaking, or you just get on stage and you realize I just forgot everything. Yes, I forgot my whole speech. Uh huh. I forgot everything yes. that I was about yeah. to say. Yeah, and you just make it up. And when you do that enough, you've pressure tested that skill enough throw you in front of the room mm -hmm. ding 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 impromptu speech kyle take it away yeah and you've done it I, and i've seen you do it and it's like that sort of pressure testing of doesn't have to be martial arts it can be everyday life everyday skills mm -hmm. we pressure test our business yeah we try to break our own business what could be a fatal shot where are the where are the weaknesses and can we reinforce those weaknesses through a pressure test to help patch things up and the pressure testing is good because it's better to break your business or figure out your weaknesses in martial arts in a safe controlled environment yes than to do it in real time or in a, like a, a dangerous space exactly get um, blindsided yeah imagine having these fake well not fake i should say these unrealistic ideas of what self-defense would be and then getting it tested in a real situation and it failing you horribly right yeah but it, it's so hard because you see all this out there with uh people saying that's fake martial arts you could mm -hmm. literally post anything and somebody's mm -hmm. going to call it fake so yeah it's so hard to know what real martial arts is by just looking at it and but that's i think that's the problem real martial arts what is real martial arts and that's what does that mean? That's what I was working towards. The only way to know whether something is real or fake or whether it's applicable to you is to get out there and, and try it and do it. And if you're able to do it against resisting opponents, mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. other people, it's yeah. like, okay, this is this is starting to work. You can't mm -hmm. just watch a video, practice it at yeah. home a few times and then say, mm -hmm. you can get the ideas, you can get the information. You could become more knowledgeable about it. It can open windows and doors mm -hmm. and educate you and meet, let you meet the right people. Yeah. yeah. But there's no replacement for training. And martial arts is such an umbrella that encompasses a lot of arts mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah, Tai Chi is technically a martial art. Yeah. You know, Aikido is a martial art. Mm -hmm. And I would know nothing if I went to try and go and do Aikido. Yeah. And I would be dysfunctional in that art under that system because I haven't trained it. Mm -hmm. And I think what where where people often get hung up is if all they're thinking of martial arts is self-defense, there true. are martial arts that are not good for self-defense. No. Fact. And that you can't always look at the lens of like that wouldn't work in the street because it that's not yeah. the intent of all martial arts. No. Some people love doing arts for the, the, the benefits of just breaking a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. They, they aren't even thinking about, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get, here's how I'm going to disarm the knife. You know? Yeah. Well, Sifu or Sensei Ben Lim. Yeah. A keto practitioner. Amazing. That man is so limber, falls like an angel full of joy and like can dive roll and, and he's 80 and he's, yeah he's <laughs> something eight, like that like, yeah but he's tell, getting close to 80 tell me that martial arts isn't beneficial the best thing that he could be doing for himself like, exactly it's amazing mm -hmm. the the condition and shape and mobility and yeah. strength he has mm -hmm. from doing his martial mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. and yeah he could beat up 
most 80 year olds. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So pressure testing all of these things in different environments yields different results. And I think that's kind of the, my takeaway of this last little while in training where we've really been focusing on pressure testing is looking at where do things break down and where they break down, what can be reinforced so it is less likely to break down again. And even though I'm still breaking down all the time, I'm not breaking down as much. And to me, that's progress. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm not sucking as much. <laughs> Do you think pressure testing discourages a lot of people from continually pra continuing to practice what it is they're doing? I think it can be, uh, it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of people. And, and think about it. You are getting in a, it's a struggle. It is, it's all right, let's see if this works. And then new variables show up because now you have a resisting opponent that has an objective. Eric, your objective is to stab Kyle. Kyle, your objective is to control the, the hand. And so I'm coming in to try and shank you. Yeah. It's different when it's step one, step two. Okay. Compliant opponent. All right. Yeah. Now let's turn up the heat. Right. And it's it's a it can be uncomfortable but and it it's something that went once you go through it and start to get more comfortable with it the real results start showing up and then you you kind of just get it you're like okay this is why this is valuable even though it might be uncomfortable most things that are valuable are uncomfortable and when your ego is really predominant pressure testing is hard because you think you know it you were like oh man i know this stuff i i should be good at it then it gets pressure tested you're like wow i didn't do very well at all right and then your ego kind of kicks in you're like why wasn't i doing this yeah. i should have done yeah. this better like what the hell i felt the exact same way yeah. i didn't just, even execute the technique yeah and now you have to just look yourself in the mirror and be like i don't know this as well as i thought i did mm -hmm. and it's humbling yeah of course of course, and most martial arts is humbling, right? Mm -hmm. Because it moves so quickly and it's so reactionary and timing and like you, you have no time to think about anything. And no matter what, there's always going to be someone who's better than you. Yes. So you will, you're, I almost, I don't know if it's possible to go into martial arts and not be humbled. Yeah. You know, like it's just, it is. And I think it's such a huge value proposition of martial arts is it does humble us. It does make us realize that, Hey, we might not be the hot shit. We think we are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so true. And it's, Hey, you still have a lot to learn. And I think if we can, take that humbleness that when, when we get humbled on the mats by a, a master, a sensei, a Sifu, where you are, you're in awe of the mastery and you get humbled, you get, you don't know what you're doing. I think if we can take that into our everyday lives and realize like it's no different in life, there's so much that we don't know. And if we humble ourselves and open up our minds, that's where real learning takes place. Definitely. And they say when you get a black belt is when you realize that you know nothing. And that is so powerful. You think you go through this whole thing, you reach the pinnacle of whatever this art is in a lot of people's eyes. And that's just the gateway into it. It's just the, the step to know that like mm -hmm. you don't know anything. So martial arts is a, is a powerful tool. It really is. Buddha Brothers Challenge. Oh, if you've lived the last little while without a high amplitude amount of stress in terms of pressure, if you haven't been under pressure to perform where something is likely to break down, go put yourself in a situation where you can pressure test, whether it's your business, the, your martial art, what. Go and train with someone that's outside it. Pressure test something that you've been working on. Find something in your life to pressure test and apply the pressure because I have found it is very easy to get comfortable and stay in the warm blanket of that which is known and the comfort of not 
stepping outside the safe zone, go get uncomfortable and apply some pressure, apply some pressure and let that pressure help you realize where you need to reinforce your shortcomings. Love it. Well, thank you for listening and we will catch you next week.